Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make a histogram today using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, this is like a special kind of graph. Last time we went over uh, how to make a scatter graph or your first graph. Here's, an, here's another type of graph we can make, histograms. These are super important in particle physics, which um, I have an activity that I add on to this um, as well. My name's Enrique, I'm from West Hawaii and I'm representing the DoD STEM ambassador program for FIRST Robotics. Okay, so uh, let's make a Jupyter Notebook using Google Colab. Let's just go to your drive. And oops, made a Google Doc. Let's close that, I don't wanna... Let's uh, new, just like making a Google Doc, you scroll down more um, Google Collaboratory. So you have to watch the first video to set that up for the first time, but you have to like uh, add that in if it's not added in. Okay, uh, let's see. We've got, um, let's call this a uh, histogram penny mass data. So um, there's an activity uh, I would strongly recommend you do. Um, so typically when I do histograms in my class, I always start with this histogram penny mass data. It's a data, it's a quarknet data activity. So quarknet well, I'll show you how to get there. So if you go to quarknet.org and then you click on data activities, it's usually the first one that pops up, massive US pennies. That's where I'm getting this activity from. And there's some notes here and student guide. So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here, but this is where the data is collected, right? Okay, um, I've stored the data on my GitHub repository under my data sets. And again, last video, we showed you how to make a uh, GitHub and we sort of looked at this kind of stuff. So if you look at penny mass data right here, um, this is what it looks like. Pay, it's the year of the penny. So this penny, 1974, and the mass in grams. So 3.1075 grams. Um, so in the class activity, you get a really sensitive scale and you have students measure the mass of pennies in several years. Um, and then you histogram these. Okay, so we're gonna create a histogram uh, of this data set. Okay, uh, and this is one, one, one thing you can histogram. There's many other things you can histogram. Okay, uh, let's see. So uh, how do I create a histogram? So again, uh, you need the raw, to import this data, you're gonna, you need the um, URL to your GitHub of the comma separated value for our file. So just copy that. Um, and you're gonna paste it into your Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so let's go to Jupyter Notebook land. That's this one right here. Uh, before I can actually, I need to import those libraries. And so um, how do I import libraries? Well, I just go to some other file that has, <laughs> I just copy and paste. So import pandas, numpy, matplot, um, control C. This is the uh, first graph ever. Watch the previous video if you know what that is. So this imports all of the libraries. It's taking a second here, plus code. So now I can read a CSV file. Um, let's call it data equals read. I know it's pd.read CSV. Looks like you can read in a bunch of files. But let's do CSV. And then we're gonna do um, quotes and control V, oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's undo that. We need the copy and paste, so control C. I'm copying and pasting the raw data link. Go back to um, histogram penny, control V. So that is my raw data file URL play. Uh, let's add a code block. What does this data look like? Let's just type in the word data. So there it is. Data has two columns, year and mass. Um, very good. So how do I make a histogram? Um, it's plt.hist. Instead of plt.plot, which is what we did before, we're gonna do hist. And what it needs is um, data and number bins. Um, I think if you don't put in anything but the data set, then, um, then, um, you get, uh, you just defaults to 10 bins. So let's let's just make up some data so you can see what it's doing here. 
if especially if you've never done a histogram, I mean, it's very useful to have some, some histograms. So let's just make up some data here. So let's make an array of numbers here for x. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, um, let's grab, uh, play that. And then, oof, I got to put commas in there to separate my data points. Okay. Uh, and then when we get a histogram of x, it's going to basically make a column chart. Uh, what this is saying is there's exactly one element that's one. Um, so this is like, let's put some labels in here. How do I put in labels? Same way I did before, x label. And this is going to be like value of x. And this is like number of x's. Uh, oh, I should put these in, like, quotes. Hello? Anyway, I'm like, what's it it's saying something here? Okay. Um, and then, oof, there's too many quotes. I know there's something. Let's just leave it like that. Uh, okay, so number of x's and value of x. So um, there's exactly one. That's one. There's one of two, one of three, one of four. So if I just, like, go back to my data set and just type in a bunch of ones. Let's just type in like, three more ones. One more ones. What's what's it going to look like when I histogram those? Um, so you can see there's a spike here. There's four. Uh, there's four. That's the number of ones that there are. And there's one, two, and one, three, and one, four. Why is it making all these, like, gaps between them? Because its default is ten bins. Um, so if you understand anything about histograms, which I hope you kind of do, then... Um, Number of bins is the second variable in here. So if I if I go in here and change this to like five bins instead of ten bins, it'll look like this, right? And this is maybe something you're more used to seeing. There's no gaps in the histograms. It's because there's no values for like, you know, it's trying to divide it into ten and there's only five values. So if I put in some more numbers in here, let's put in like five, four, oop, not six. Let's just keep everything between one and five. Two, three, three, um, one. So let's do this and histogram that. So you can see there's a shape emerging here, right? So we only have like one four, and <laughs> that's true. If you look at our data set, there's only one four. And then the rest, um, and it's not exactly four. It's like numbers between three and a half and four, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a weird, weird number there. But anyway, that's that's kind of what it's doing, right? It's doing this like histogram between two and a half and three and a half, I think is what it's doing. Any, anyway, so this is how you make a histogram, right? You need the X data and you need the number of bins. Like if I change the number of bins to one bin, um, then I get, there's 13 data points between the values of one and five because there's 13 numbers in here. That makes sense. It's one bin. What if I made two bins? So if I made two bins, what it's saying is, there's seven between one and three and or one and two point nine or something like that. And then there's like six between three and five, right? Something like that. So it's saying that's that's what it's saying, right? So you know, for this data set, five bins might be good at describing what, what the shape of it looks like, because these are just numbers between one and five, right? Um what if I put in ten, right? Ten ten bins. That's like the default. Uh, then you get like some gaps in here, and there's like no numbers in the, in there, right? There's no numbers in here, right? So um, number of bins is something you have to play around with, and uh, that is like part of the activity today that you have to examine your histogram, and you can play with number of bins. So let here's my data, right? How do I get my data to be x, right? So like I this is typically we're given data, right? We're not like you know, we have collected this data, right? So let's add a code block here. Let's do, let's define x2 instead of x, because x has already have value. It's the data, and then we're going to do mass, not year. Data, mass, play. Okay, so this is going to give us, and just um, let's just look at what this data looks like, just to make sure we got it right. So these are the grams, right? This is like... There's 149 data points in the X2 
uh, variable here, and there's um, a lot of different masses for these pennies, right? Let's histogram that. So if I go into, what's the command for histogramming these? Plus code, it's plt.hist. And it's just the data, right? X2. And then number of bins. So it's gonna default to 10 bins. I'm just gonna write the number 10 anyway, just so you can see what it looks like. So there's, there's the um, histogram of the penny mass data. Okay, so you can see there's some gaps in the middle. This is grams, right? So this is actual data, right? Let me put in some labels here so you can kind of see what you're doing. PLTX label, and then I want to put in colon, and this is going to be mass in put gram. Let's put G. Uh, PLTY label. This is a number of pennies. Okay, then I'll hit play. So there we go. I got nice labels here. This is like something I could turn in. <laughs> this looks great. Okay, uh, but you can see here there's, um, this is 10, is 10 bins the right number of bins here to use for this, right? There's a, there's a lot of pennies over here, 70 pennies in between 3.05 and 3.15, right? And then there's like no pennies in here, it looks like. Um, so there's a couple of tricks here I want to show you guys how to do before I leave the histogram insanity. But let, let's just do, what happens if you have one bin? So one bin, you have 144 pennies, and they're all between 2.2, you know, 2.4 and 3.2. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, um, that doesn't tell you a whole bunch about the, um, you know, the distribution. If I had two, two bins, you know, 40 of them, now you're getting, a, you know, more of them are over here, right? On this side, more, a little bit heavier. But what if I did like 100 bins, right? Like, is that is that too much information? Oh, wow, that actually might be, might be better at describing it. So let's just reflect here. There's not very many pennies. Because so if I do 1,000 pennies, I mean, you can see what happened here. The numbers went down. I only have 144 pennies, right? So... You can expect that at some point you're just gonna have one value for everything. Like if I put in a thousand, I'm gonna have number of pennies one for each one, right? It's just gonna it's not gonna tell us a lot about the information. But this one might actually tell us because we have we're starting to get like ten pennies in here. There's like a little spike right here. There's like looks like a couple spikes over here, right? Sixteen pennies. So this might actually tell us something about the information, right? Um, but if I put in a thousand, right, that's probably overkill with the data set because I just need more data to collect. I could have a thousand, but you can see even here there's four that have the exact same number. But like you can see that this doesn't, this may not actually tell you anything in the data set. So there might be some gray area in there. Let's go back to 10, um, 10 bins. So you're gonna have to play around with that. Okay, uh, awesome. Uh, so, oof, there is a trick for zooming in, um, it's the range, the range, but, um, yeah, anyway, these are, so this is how you make a quick histogram, uh, of your, of your stuff, and I know there is a way to change the range really quick, I feel bad that I, let me pause it for a second. Okay, so I looked it up, um, if I want to zoom into the histogram, I can actually, in the hist command, just type in the word range. And you remembered it was something like this. And then and then you just type in the range that you want to zoom in. And the way you do this is you have brackets and then you just type in the numbers. So like, let's say I want to zoom in to 2.5 to 2.6. So I put my low value in first, 2.5 comma 2.6. That's my high value. So what what's going to happen here? Let's take a look. So what this has done is it only makes it makes 10 bins, but it makes them between 2.5 and 2.6. And then it looks at just this data set, right? So you can see, it's like I've zoomed in and made 10 bins in here. And so I have like, you know, seven pennies that are between 2.5 and 2.51. So maybe there's a spike here because I have eight pennies, right? Uh, and you can change the range. So if I did like 2.4 to 2.6, it's gonna make 10 bins between 2.4 and 2.6, so the bins are slightly bigger, right? 
Um, so if you wanted to keep the soys the same, you would make that at 20 because you're doubling the length, so you should double the number of pins. Now I have, like, again, my number of pennies, it's like 7 and 8 instead of 16. But you can see the distribution here. So this range here is real nice at zooming in. Like, let's just, let's just, um, uh, let's just leave it like that. So uh, again, you can explore your histogram using basically these three parameters, right? So you're gonna you're gonna plot your data. How do I get my data? I have to import that on GitHub uh, using the CSV read command, the read CSV command. Uh, you, this is number of bins, right? So if I only have one bin, that doesn't tell me much, but it tells me that how many data points I got in there. Right? And then it's gonna. I can also change the range. Um, to just zoom in or zoom out, right? So I could do like, uh, I think the largest, yeah. So, so this is going to be like, um, how you make histograms in Jupyter, and it's it's real easy to um, mess around with histograms once you're in Jupyter. Thanks for listening.